Hey, Don here, the auction professor. Today, we're going to talk about some paper items that go for some insane amounts of money. Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today, we're going to talk about another item that I sell routinely that makes us a lot of money. We're going to talk specifically about tobacco cards and some of the insane values that they sell for. Let's hop over to the screen right now and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So here we are with tobacco cards. Now, tobacco cards started back in, say, the 1870s for the most part. And tobacco cards are considered some of the very first sports cards of any type. Even some of the Victorian scrap of the day are considered baseball cards. Now, just because it's a tobacco card doesn't mean that it has to be a sports-related card. They did them for heads of states, flags, buildings, uh, all kinds of things. Daily lives, holidays, costumes, stage actresses, all the way up and through the 40s and 50s. It's something that's been around for a very long time. This is where baseball cards started, as I said, as well as most sports cards in general. This is Ty Cobb. This one went for around $1,000. It was a best offer, so the price shown is not what it sold for. So you can go back and double check. It's not in the greatest condition. It has issues at the bottom of it. It has issues on the sides. It's dirty. It has some creasing, and it still went for that kind of money. Now, some baseball players didn't want their image used on cards that would be in tobacco, which would have been sold to children back in the day as well. So they didn't put their card image in it. So some of those are specifically rare, rarer than any ones that were pulled during production. Now, you can look up the specifics on them. Ty Cobb is one of those that goes for an insane amount of money because of things like that. So something to think about. These show up in lots of state sales auctions all over the place. Some of the value on these is just insane. I've picked some lesser value cards. There are some of these cards that go for a couple hundred thousand dollars and even into the millions in several occasions. It just depends on the card we were talking about. Wayne Gretzky, a very famous hockey player, has some high dollar investments into some cards just like this. There are many high-end collectors that will spend a ton of money to buy specific cards to finish off a set. Some of the highest dollar ones, though, are sports related, but they go all over the board, as I said. So let's look at a few more here. Now, this is a Mitchell cigarette card. This is from a British company. Now, tobacco and cigarettes in general have been some of the most imported and exported items on the globe for over 100 years. So these type of material could have been bought all over the place. Don't just think they're going to be confined to one specific country or not. So if you're in another country, Australia, England, or wherever you're at, these type of things sell no matter what. It does not necessarily matter the country. Some of the foreign ones are more expensive than some of the U.S. versions of some of the cards as well. Now, this is Walt Disney here. This one went for around $800. It was a bin. So again, the prices will not be what they sold for when you're looking at them this way. Now, here's some Dutch ones from the Cinema Star sets. Now, there's a ton of different sets of the Cinema Stars, movie stars of the day throughout the different countries in Europe and even some in Asia. Most of those have some cards that are insanely scarce. Laurel and Hardy, Walt Disney are two of the better ones in this set here. Something I would always look for. Mickey Mouse is actually pictured in the card. Very early one. This one went for over $800. Nice set. These are slab. You can PSA these, just like any traditional sports card in the day. Now, next one's four Buckner cards. These are in terrible, terrible condition. They're folder cards, basically. Even the front halves of some of these can go for some good money. This company made many sets like this. Defenders and Offenders, which will be police officers, and then criminals as well. And as you can see, they're in not great condition. They've got a lot of issues with them. Ripped corners, stuff stuck to the back. Even in this condition, these cards are extremely scarce. $848 for these. Seven bids. This is a legitimate thing here. Now, the next one here is from Allen & Ginter, a major tobacco company here in the United States. Now, this is Geronimo, very well-known Native American Indian. Now, this is a larger card. It's not the smaller size most people are familiar with. This one goes for some good money, $785. Next one's a 1939 George Herman 
It's a Babe Ruth card. This is Babe Ruth back in the day, 1939, George H. Ruth, better known as Babe Ruth. And this one's from Cape Town in South Africa. Very scarce card, $666. Not the best price, but still a nice sale on this one. Now, this next one is a tobacco card as well as a playing card. If you bought enough packs of cigarettes back in the day, you could collect enough to have a set of playing cards. One of the hardest cards to get is the Joker. Everybody wanted this one. There was very limited numbers of these out there. So these are fairly scarce. It's just like a normal playing card, just like a normal playing card, but it came in Duke's Little Joker cigarettes. So very interesting, $600 on this one. Now here's a Willis set. Now Willis is a British tobacco company. This is one of the sets that they issued. It's 50 cards. It has every sport from 50 major countries. One of the best ones on the top is the baseball one on the top left. That one can sell on its own fairly well also. Now here's another Allen and Ginter. This is Annie Oakley, very well known Western American star. Just a nice example of this card. High ranked, very decent card. Now the backs on most of these early Allen and Ginter cards will list all the cards in the set or sometimes different aspects of what's on the face of the card. $499 on this one. Now this next one's another Allen and Ginter, very scarce one with Mike Kelly. It's a baseball card as you can see. It's in terrible condition. Looking at the back, it is beat to all heck. It still went for almost $500 because of the scarcity of this card. Now, some series of tobacco cards, there's no known examples to show of certain cards from some sets. Some sets, they don't even know the exact number of cards issued. They are that scarce, some of these. So even in this horrible condition, they still sell for some insane amounts of money. Now, here's a set of playing cards. This is 23 cards from Kids Plug. And as you can see, they are literally playing cards with all the major suits on them. The backs are like playing cards, just as anything else would be. You get one card in each pack of cigarettes. So it would take you some time to put a set of playing cards together. But it was an incentive, obviously, to buy them. Now here's a Morning Dawn. This is LaBelle George. This is a cigarette factory in New Orleans. Anything from this area of production goes very well. This is after the Civil War, so there weren't as many factories still around, so some of the type of items like this go for some good money. $475. Now, this next one's from Newsboy Tobacco. This is an actual photograph, a cabinet card. Now, some did have cabinet cards in them. They didn't necessarily also have to be sold in cigarettes. You could find them in cigarellos, cigars, and even pouches would have some cards in it. So, nice example here. This is Mark Twain, if you didn't recognize the image. And it sold for 425 bucks. Now, here's a Males Cut Plug. Plug was a chunk of tobacco, basically, and you could buy it that way. Males is the company that made this. This is a baseball-related card. It's a wild pitch. Now, it's a comical card, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a baseball player, but it's for a wild pitch. It's from the baseball card set, if you did not know that. This is one people will miss occasionally. 350 bucks. It's graded, as you can see, fairly scarce. Baseball Comics is the line this came out of the series. Now, this next one's from 1910, a little later one. This is Champion Series Boxing with Jack Johnson card in it. Some of these cards can go for a couple hundred bucks on their piece. Some aren't that scarce. There were many of these made. This is when the high range of collectibles were coming into the being, and these things were collected in mass quantities. So there's many more of these available than the early Allen & Ginter cards that I just showed you. So $305, 25 bids on this lot here. Now, here's a very scarce Swiss, Swedish card of Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff on any card usually goes for some good money. Bella Lugosi, any of those stars that you could imagine from that era will go for good money, especially if they're not wearing makeup or as a character. Frankenstein as well would go for some good money. Dracula also. So any of those are good. Horror actors, stars, movie-related items go incredibly well in the tobacco card section. This one went for $296. Now, this next one's a Harry Houdini card. This is from a foreign set. 
Um, a Spanish would be Cuba, I would say, by the Havana on here. Havana is what that is. Very scarce card. It's been trimmed. It's a smaller card. Has some issues, some creases, some folds, but it has Harry Houdini on it. $239 in this condition with nine bids. Good sale here. Many people pass these by looking at the condition. They don't recognize the language on the back or it's been trimmed or it has creases and think that they don't carry value. Now, we find tobacco cards all the time. If the price is right, it's worth your investment, even in some bad conditions, because as you can see, it doesn't matter for some of these. They're just that rare. And this last set here is a 1930 set. So it's a later one. It has Babe Ruth in it. It's sports and games in many lands. This is probably a British set, if I'm not mistaken. And it shows baseball and other things. So it'll show you sports that are popular in different countries. Say in Spain, you may see bullfighting or something along that line. So again, these are newer ones, so they're not as valuable. $225. Now, these would have been sold and you could send away with cigarette packs or labels or something along that line and get an album. Or you could pay for an album to mount these cards into. So this is the more modern day of this type of collectible. But they're all worth looking into. Many people will pass them up, even if it's just a few cards, not thinking there's much value. It doesn't matter if they're old enough or you have the right set of cards that they belong to. So keep an eye on these. Some of these are very small. Some go down to the size of a postage stamp. Many people will pass them by not thinking they're worth much money. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.